and uh, possibilities of um, water and sewer <clears throat> and what the town is looking to do to extend water and sewer within the town. So um, I guess at this time I'll uh, turn it over to you, Dick. And, uh, okay. Thanks, Bruce, and welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking time uh, tonight uh, to uh, listen to uh, our updates on what we're doing. And actually, tomorrow I will be uh, uh, distributing to you know, and will be mailing to you, but it will be also in print and on social media. My state of the town address that covers a lot of more detail of what we've been doing, but we've been spending a lot of time, particularly over the last two years with respect to various infrastructure, you know, planning and, and other things in developing, uh, better developing the capabilities, I think for you all actually to address uh, interests of uh, increasing number of developers. And as a result of that, uh, you know, actually starting on three years ago when I first came into office, I realized that there was a, a real dearth, you know, uh, either that it had never existed or it disappeared between December 31st and January 1st maps and documents uh, relating to our infrastructure. So since then, uh, we've gone through a number of iterations, uh, you know, with uh, CPL previously with Morris and also our other, you know, consultants uh, with respect to planning and uh, MS4, you know, and legal uh, and a wide range of things. And so tonight we'll also present uh, Tim and Tom primarily uh, the latest version of the mapping that we've done and as a result of walking through that uh, you'll be getting an update on uh, a number of the projects that we have in play uh, and I, I actually think you'll be quite impressed with the maps that we've done which I think will become a uh, a very, very useful tool uh, for the planning board, you know, for Barbara's department. She's well aware of what we're doing in our overall efforts to to address, you know, not just sustainable, reasonable development, but I think a key, a key focal point foundation for what I've been trying to do is really how do we enhance, improve the quality of life of our uh, residents and, uh, and our businesses. And I just wanted to take you know, just brief, you know, next five minutes or so, just to give you a, a quick um, a summary of some of the key initiatives that we've been working on, some of which will come out into the, uh, on the, in the maps that you will see. And uh, it starts with at the board level, you know, we are now working on and hopefully in the next few weeks finalizing our long rate well actually it's going to be the next few months as we go through it and finalizing the summer a long-term capital planning initiative that will be designed to help uh, fund and find funding for uh, investment in infrastructure and, and accelerate the improvement uh, of our sewers roads drainage sidewalks and a variety of things and you'll hear more about that a key element uh, that we've been all working on together, but I think that some of this planning that we've been doing is going to help in us expanding and diversifying our tax base. Of course, you know, we have the homestead versus non-homestead, you know, issues, uh, which is good, but I think as we are facing a lot of aging infrastructure, uh, what we've been tackling in a lot of projects is designed to not only address that aging infrastructure, but to improve upon it, take it the next level. And some of this involves more focus on our hamlets uh, with respect to water sewer, but also uh, opportunities to increase safety uh, and daily evening foot traffic, for example, you know, which means that we're looking at the certain areas uh, with sidewalks and uh, improvement of the streetscape, uh, which I think, again, as we build into it for the uh, planning uh, and buildings that might go into or businesses that might go into uh, Route 9 development, uh, these uh, opportunities will become even more uh, uh, 
uh, bountiful, I think, especially through our funding. You know, one of them also, as you know, some of you know, is the Alpine Commons, DJ site, also Plant Depot. And uh, those are, of course, critical to the town. But I think what you'll see us talking about and will be relevant to that. We are working with other agencies, DEC, EPA, uh, to name a few with respect to Wapinger Creek, you know, with respect to Sprout Creek, and uh, certainly with respect to some of the toxic sites, uh, such as the cleanup activity that's going to start soon over in the lower Wappinger Creek. So those all play into how we, you know, develop the town. Uh, Chelsea Ridge, uh, the whole Chelsea area, uh, both the lower Chelsea, then going up to Thorn Acres and up to Route 9, uh, D, uh, we're looking at additional water and sewer opportunities and also uh, working closely with the county executive and the state on uh, bringing in uh, a better traffic control uh, systems, including a possible roundabout at Chelsea Road and 9D, similar to what's going in at uh, Hackensack uh, and uh, All Angels you know, area. And so, you know, we're, we're working with them and what Tom and Tim have done uh, in the presentation you're about to see is actually pull from databases that uh, are including county, state, GIS. Uh, no place has there been a comprehensive set of maps that can serve as tools you know, for, uh, for everyone here on this call and others as well. So. I think uh, what we'll do is I'll have uh, Tim and Tom, you know, Tim can introduce it maybe a little bit more and then Tom and uh, Tim will share on the screen a number of the maps that we have. This is still somewhat work in progress as we're going to try to define some other elements as you'll see such as wetlands or soil conditions such as where are you know, rock outcroppings. But basically, we've done a comprehensive uh, uh, summary in the maps of where the water and sewer systems lie, the districts, where are even the pipelines of pump stations, as well as uh, an inventory of the town lands, uh, largely vacant you know, properties or properties in which we've had decommissioning of various uh, former sewer and water uh, facility. So uh, without any further ado, you know, Tim, I'll turn it over to you and uh, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tim Luke, the CPO, along with Tom Harvey tonight. So as the Supervisor mentioned, there's a lot of information that we compiled and we thought of a way of presenting that in a fashion where you could see it and sort of progress through the thought process. Um, so with that, Tom, why don't you start with the water water district map. So um, basically with the map that Tom will share, <clears throat> the blue shaded area is all within the, the existing United Wappingers Water District. And, you know, if we were to drill down into these blue shaded areas, there are uh, infrastructure located throughout, but not infrastructure located everywhere within the blue shaded area. Um, also, like a quick observation visually is that you'll see white shaded areas like like islands in the middle where, you know, they're surrounded by the water district. However, those parcels are not technically within the parcel or, or the water district. There's also kind of gaps and holes around the perimeter um, that, you know, the water district encompasses parcels to the left and right, but there may be parcels that aren't uh, included. Uh, the same goes with the sewer mapping. If we switch to sewer, there again are gaps and holes and not a whole lot of uh, congruity around the uh, perimeter there to show consistency. Um, so as developers come in, you know, that's one of the first things. Are they in or out of a water or sewer district? That's question one. The question two then is, well, where is the closest water main or where is the closest sewer main? And just because they fall within a water district doesn't mean they're in close proximity to infrastructure to connect. Our, our next progression was to mold the two, the water and the sewer together um, 
so that ideally, you know, a developer is going to want water and sewer, and that's graphically uh, presented by the purple area. Uh, so you can see there's outlying areas of water only to the north and uh, sewer only to the south and west. Um, so again, it's like when we look at development, you know, we would have a prime area, obviously, within the purple area that would be a, a, a good target. Um, from there, we started to look at, you know, how, what else is out there to try to be a catalyst for uh, improving utilities, expanding the infrastructure. And, you know, with that, Tom, if you want to go to the next map. You know, I think this map shows where we added the town parcels, correct? And, and there's right. town parcels intermixed with some of the highlights of development around the area. Um, so, you know, Tom can give you a kind of a virtual tour of each one of these as, as we sort of navigate the compass. But, you know, I'll just broadly say in some instances, there are existing town owned sewer facilities such as the Wildwood and the Midpoint Park that are under notice of violation with DEC. Um, those programs, we've uh, applied for grant monies. There's grant money in place for Wildwood. Uh, Midpoint Park is, is the next target. And as you can see, Midpoint is sort of an island relative to sewer. There's water all around, but no sewer connection. So that in itself uh, creates a, a hurdle there. Um, but, you know, our intent is, and we can get further into the discussion later, but to use these as sort of a catalyst, there's some funding in place to start uh, infrastructure in, in the sense of a ladder system, say, and, you know, the idea would be is to expand off of those ladder rungs to outreach to other areas where development occurs. So, um, Tom, do you want to just do a quick sort of virtual tour around some of our developed areas and what's going on? Yep. Well, I think the easiest place to start is right here at the north of the town, where, as you can see, we don't really have any water or sewer on the town then, but there's county water in the area. So when we say airport service area, that's really a long way to bring in town water to get it within the vicinity of the airport. Um, as Tim mentioned, we're working on Wildwood. We've got some funding on trying to get their issues sorted out for, for sewer. And then down here in Woodhill Green, we're also trying to get their water situation sorted out. Um, moving on down, we get to the area down in this area of the Ober Creek, which I you know has been in front of the planning board a couple of times. And uh, Mr. Reese has uh, been interested in granting some easements to help get water from Old Hopewell or New Hamburg over to Marlerville Road and potentially serve some of his lots along the way of doing that. Um, that stuff kind of connects to or is in close vicinity to some of the 9D corridor or the gas land was recently being proposed and may come back. And I think part of what they want to do is, is get served by water, but also potentially help expand it to some extent. Um, and while, while you're there, you know, Tom, let me just add that, you know, we have, uh, we're finalizing the development of our hilltop wells and during my administration, we've expanded our water supply by enhancing the uh, capabilities of both Meadowwood and Hilltop you know, to give us three active wells that increase the water capacity quite significantly for the town. The reason why I raised it in the context of what we we're talking about in Houstonville is that as soon as Hilltop, you know, which you can see in the middle of the slide, comes fully online in March, uh, mid-March is our target date, then uh, Jim Moran and I will be going to New York City DEP to get the restrictions that are on the water main that goes down New Hamburg through Wheeler Hill Road to Carnweth, uh, and actually uh, Old Hopewell down you know, through there, to get those uh, water use restrictions removed and that means then that we will then, assuming that goes the way we plan it, you know, we will then have the free ability from the town's point of view to expand the water district to add uh, units that uh, housing you know, units uh, that go up and down Old Hopewell from Route 9 through Wheeler Hill over to Carnwath, uh, so that you know that could if 
people, residents want to have water more than just on failing well basis, we could then expand the water district to more than just tall trees as it currently exists. So this will be quite significant for that whole area because the existing main line as well as then the ability to take laterals out uh, from that line. And I'll stop there. So you, you got a me, good point with it. Well, let me just say, so again, it's yep. like an exercise in connecting the dots. And you know, where you see white, obviously there is no infrastructure. Where you see the red clouds are, you know, proposed development that could, you know, make the bridge of these utilities to start connecting from one place to another. All these things take time. We're, we're negotiating easements. Uh, I think right now we're, we're actively pursuing three to four easements, depending on how you look at it. And each easement will help bridge, you know, from one area to the next. So there's, there's a lot of effort going on currently. Um, and while you could say it doesn't show that there's any development or productivity, there really is a lot behind the scenes. Sorry. Um, go ahead. And I guess where I was going to say there is there is the infrastructure that got got down to Chelsea. The water lines are on these county roads that right now those areas aren't in the district yet. So if you will, that's sort of the low hanging fruit that once that capacity is kind of released by DEP, then then those people that have a hydrant right in front of their house and don't understand why they can't connect, there might be potential for them to connect. Now. Um, one little sort of side note on here: these these little green parcels in here are um, tenancy agreements now. So these people have had emergency water problems with their wells. They've contacted the town board and got a tenancy agreement so that they can be served from that water line. And ultimately that would be incorporated into a district expansion and then they become part of the district just like anybody else who's in the district. Um, so moving right on down Wheeler Hill, I mean, I guess Cosm, the Church of Sacred Mirrors is here. They've expressed some interest in getting a fire service into their facility. Um, and then we get down to the Chelsea area where there have been a lot of um, parcels connected. And we've just kind of wrapped that up with the DEP. And now this is the area where we're looking to get an uh, easement to extend the water main out the end of Skytop into the Chelsea apartments area. Um, with the potentials for eventually potentially connecting to a main that actually comes up out of Fishkill along Chelsea Road. And, and we are having, you know, intermunicipal discussions with, you know, Fishkill and also East Fishkill. And we'll talk a little bit more, I think, uh, with respect to that as well, you know, concerning possible interconnection, whether or not it's emergency or, or otherwise, both sewer and water. And then this is just another little gap down here where the, the town of Wappinger system ends and Fishkill ends at the town line, and there's a small few lots or kind of almost no man's land in between them. And that's another potential short route to make a new municipal, intermissible connection potential. And the brown area down there is our uh, Castle Point Park. Yep, yep. So then we move to the, the, the biggest challenge, honestly, is the route now. It's the biggest challenge, but it's also got potential for being the biggest benefit. Um, there's a lot of costs associated with trying to run utilities along the state highway. So the idea would be running them on either side of the state highway and cross it as little as possible. But we've kind of developed a conceptual three phase approach to potentially do this. And some of it might be driven by various um, developers that come along and have a desire to help, help contribute to it. And so while money is always the issue, what drives the cost of some of these projects are like exposed rock or shallow rock. And, you know, there's areas obviously within the town that fall within that purview. And, you know, that was one of the things that came out of the discussion today is, you know, maybe we can do a layer that shows areas that are, you know, shallow rock and that may preclude or, or be the, like the last choice of uh, a candidate for development. I know, uh, Splash Town is just south of the town line there, and it's it would be a viable uh, user. However, you know, not only the the run of the the pipe to get it there, but then also the rock would uh, compound the installation. So um, that's another factor to consider in all this. Um, you know, as and then just point out Fleetwood, Tom, Tim, and Tom. You know, and uh, again, what may be driving and making water 
sewer going down Route 9 also more right. important. You know, so please use that purple area there that Tom's circling in. In our discussions with DEC and our notice of violations relative to Wildwood and pending on Midpoint Park, they've also warned that it won't be long before Fleetwood falls under there. So under another potential notice of violation, a lot of that is because the DEC has raised their standards and made it uh, more complex and difficult for these older sewage treatment plants to uh, number one meet meet the the standard and to make it you know cost effective. So. Uh, you know, our eye on, on what to do about Fleetwood, as we know it's coming down the road, uh, lends us to looking at possible other sewer connections, either to Fishkill or through Fishkill to the IBM plant, which we can pull another graphic up uh, later in the discussion. So we're almost back to where we started here. There's been some recent inkling about a parcel right here getting developed and um, you know, and asking about water and sewer. As you can see, that's sort of one of those blanks in the middle of our stuff. And there's other people along the well that might want to be served as well. So that's an area that we're recently considering trying to serve and seeing what kind of interest can come out of that. Um, there's, a, there's a potential for Mr. Shah in the vicinity of the mosque here to extend some water from Sherwood Heights and also potentially help further the connection out to Myers Corners Road where there's water. So we're still working with them on getting that laid out and getting some kind of a plan that's going to benefit both the town and the property. And in anticipation of that potential build out, uh, when Myers Corner Road was uh, repaved, you know, we did work with the county and we have, what is it, eight sleeves across, you know, Tom? Uh, There's we a have bunch a of sleeves, of sleeves that, across. Yeah, the sleeves were contemplated to serve like the firehouse and specific areas that we knew were going to eventually want water and right. crossings for mains, but the sleeves were mainly for potential future services. And the same thing mentioned about, you know, with respect to the new Hackensack, All Angels, Hills, you know, roundabout, because also we're looking at sleeves and we're trying to address, you know, several different water issues up in that neck of the woods. Yeah. So I'm going to move on to a next map. Now we've taken this map and and not only considered the potential expansion areas, but now actually highlighted these pink colors, projects that have actually either expressed interest or been inquiring amongst the town, or in some cases like Cedar Hill and Alpine, they've actually had uh, pre-application meetings with the town. Um, so I, mean, I guess Alpine is one of the biggest ones for the town that they're considering um, a mixed use of, uh, they were talking, anywhere from multifamily, a gas station, potential hotel. Um, they, they, they had some ideas and they kind of went back to the drawing board to try to refine their ideas. And then once they refine their ideas, we're gonna have to look at that site because although that site has, uh, I believe they have fire water right now, but they're not in the district, um, but they do, they, they have limited sewer. So we're gonna have to look at not only are they in the district, are they entitled to sewer, but what kind of capacities were figured for them. And, and what their proposed development, whether it exceeds those capacities or is within those capacities. Um, and that's a similar issue for Cedar Hill um, and potentially Chelsea Apartments down here where there's you know, obviously limited sewer capacity. So when the time comes, if people want to, I, I believe for Cedar Hill, there's a, a formula gets you somewhere around 40,000 gallons a day. So if they wanted much more than that, we're going to have to talk about how that can be accommodated. Um, here's the parcel on Old Hopeful that we mentioned a minute ago. And down here for Chelsea Apartments, there's an interesting plan brewing where they have their own little sewer treatment plant. And we're discussing with them potential expansions or improvements to help serve other areas in the town with the potential for eventually taking over that plant and having it be town operated. And we have contemplated ideas of people that could be served by that. So unless anybody has any questions on this, um, those are the main maps that we've been looking at, but we got sort of in our back pocket, if you will, we've started trying to look at this on a, a larger scale um, in terms of the, the three towns. We, our office represents Fishkill, uh, East Fishkill and Wappinger. So we've taken advantage of that opportunity in trying to help all three towns work together. 
you know, three years ago, I set up an intermunicipal, uh, you know, a compact of sorts, you know, with those and other, you know, communities, including LaGrange and the village in Poughkeepsie. So part of that, uh, and part of the information we put into this map is from that approach, you know, where we were looking at possible interconnection sites uh, that could be either used for, you know, emergency backup water, and, and we have uh, already been working on implementing one with the village and then uh, village of Wappingers Falls, you know, and so based on this sort of mapping, you know, which uh, is uh, really quite, you know, good at showing the locations of lines and pump stations, you know, we've been able to further refine what might be some good intersection points uh, for interconnection uh, between different communities. And now that we have a very strong water supply, there is interest from surrounding communities also how to be, maybe work together uh, and, and perhaps in exchange for sewer capacity or some other creative way to, to approach it. So we have the version of this for sewer too, but it's a little more, a little more involved. I can pull that up here real quick, I think. Yeah, Tom, I think the sewer is a little more relevant to this discussion if yeah. we look back at uh, Midpoint Park and again trying to yep. you know, right. uh, turn that, we, you know, again, like I said earlier, uh, it's under a notice of violation. We know we have to do something. It's sort of too small to really afford, you know, piping it too far. Um, and it would have to either go to Trimuni, which is quite a ways, or you know, what we propose here as a draft discussion uh, is this red line shows an interconnect to uh, the Hopewell Hamlet sewer plant in East Fishkill. And um, again, I use a reference as ladders and ladder rungs and extending. And, you know, there could be a intermunicipal agreement where, you know, the red line in the East Fishkill side starts to uh, serve you know, provide more service for East Fishkill in those areas, but then it also provides a ladder for us to connect to, to get to midpoint, which then opens up, you know, a lot of viability, you know, from the, the line going west to midpoint. But then if we think of the ladder and extending it, you know, it's not much further north to the airport area where we have the light industrial area. So while that's thinking really big and probably long term, um, you know, I think, you know, we have to think of this in increments and this would be a very good starting increment for future development all along that corridor. Oh, well, we've been working on this for a little while. And as you know, Tim says, uh, that we've been having the discussions with DEC and prioritizing first with Wildwood this, and then ultimately it's Fleetwood. But I think, you know, we've had some productive meetings with East Fishkill on how to do that in a win-win approach. And so, for example, the line, the red line going out at Midpoint, you know, Park, you know, then it goes into, you know, 376, and that would allow, you know, certain areas along 376 to be addressed differently than, let's say, the castle currently is right now on 376, if we're to do it, and uh, also some other properties that go along, you know, the uh, Sprout Creek uh, on the uh, west side of the creek. So. Uh, this now we're taking it to the next level from for Midpoint Park and looking at you know costs uh, and sources of funding uh, potential you know, usage and particularly as it would go into Hopewell Hamlet, uh, Hamlet uh, and their existing capacity which they do have existing capacity most definitely to take on the Midpoint Park uh, you, know, you know capacity as well as uh, additional so uh, that, that's what we're looking at, but you will notice that the number of sewer lines here as compared to water lines and mains is far fewer, although the districts are very much uh, similar. And so one thing, if I could just back up a minute that we kind of missed a little bit, and one of the things we've been working on, and they're shown in this yellow color, is trying to sort out, catalog, understand, and figure out where they all are, all the town-owned properties. Because I understand there's been some things about lands being dedicated to the town that are marginally usable, if you will. 
and um, some reconsiderations on what to do with rec areas and about accepting land as far as um, it's connected to a development and things like that. So these these yellow properties are owned by the town and also helping one, you know, figure out ways to fill in the gaps when we're trying to route utility ground, but also walkways, improvements, you know, potential town, you know, maybe a new park, you know, one of these vacant pieces becomes a new park or something like that. And, and it also allows us to address another issue we've been uh, doing, Jim Horan in particular, but that's the uh, recreation fee charges and, you know, what the case law says is that we really need to have a list to understand what our inventory of parks are, you know, what are the projects. I think we've come up with a master list of more than 75, you know, different projects throughout the town, but much of it deals with the parks, park facilities and buildings. And uh, CPL has a list of major projects. Uh, Steve Frazier has that you know, list of 75. So then we are able to start getting around a prioritization of lists that then can the monies from uh, the recreation fees will then be able to comply with the legal requirements with a greater degree of specificity you know, that we would have. And, and the other thing the town can look at as part of this, like there may be some things, old, old utility parcels that are no longer necessary, like some of these things down in tall trees that used to be part of a water system and are no longer, you know, there, there's potential for the town considering selling that, putting it back on the tax roll. You know, somebody could develop that as a home lot or something like that. So there's there's potential to look at some of these lots that, that you know, you could potentially put it back on the tax roll. But again, a lot of useless land uh, because of uh, the water, you know, situations with wetlands. I mean, if you point out, Tom, just point out where Town Hall is and then our property across, uh, you know, old Hopewell. You know, but Town Hall is, uh, you know, go down a little bit further, yeah. You know, so that's Town Hall, yeah, and it goes all the yeah, way Town out. Town Hall, which is that yellow, and then across Old Cokewell, we have another 40 acres, but it's largely all, you know, wetland. So, you know, whether or not that's something that could be used for a different type of park, yeah, here we go. So Town Hall is that yellow, uh, and the land behind us, that yellow area, and then, you know, further across, you know, the street, you know, behind us, you know, down the set, uh, west of Stars Crossing is more town property, as an example. But this gives you a good idea, too, of where there's, you know, gaps in uh, water and sewer. Uh, and, uh, of course, you know, crossing New Hamburg, you know, a total lack of uh, water and sewer, even though uh, the big pipe that goes to Tri Municipal, you'll see it in Reese Park. It's a little green dot up on the boundary of uh, the village. You know, the big pipe runs through most of this area, so again, you know, can be connected to, and the water, you know, main that runs down uh, Old Hopewell, New Hamburg, and uh, Wheeler Hill is now the the water conduit. Once we get a release from uh, DEP. So now we have this database, uh, you know, that uh, really is uh, going to be uh, quite usable. And of course, we'll, you know, provide this uh, and updates as we move along, Bruce, you know, to you all and, and other, you know, boards so that you'll have it electronically as well as on paper and be able to then uh, take a quick look every time you get uh, some inquiries or actual uh, uh, petitions, what have you, before you know the planning board. Yeah, no, I, I see it as being useful. Um, you know, the biggest concern is, you know, on, on some of these things where you want to expand, um, is the town going to be able to uh, fund some of those areas right. in tune with the developer? Because it sounds like with some of the sewer infrastructure. Um, with the DEC mandate, it sounds like you're going to have a lot of money that's going to have to get funneled there probably over the, right. the next few years to get those systems up and, you know, up to par. Um, will there be a way to, um, right. you know, to help? Because I, obviously some of these things, the developer is not going to want to, you know, front right. the whole thing to run water or do whatever. Um, and in some cases, they may walk away from a project. Um, if it's going to take, you know, three right. or four years before anything can even move forward. Right. Uh, so as I mentioned at the outset, you know, we are working on, I've pushed and we now, and the board's accepted it as uh, working on long range capital planning 
initiative where we identify, we've now identified, you know, most of, I think, of the major projects, and we're looking at then how do we fund it, you know, both out of fund balance, uh, that includes the well, all the funds, including water and sewer fund, it allows us now to have a more systematic approach to grant applications, which we do. We have a number of grant applications in place that address this, so that then we'll be able to see you know, what uh, our funding needs are or the private contributions will need to be. Uh, and the funding, you know, we're looking at both federal, state, and uh, you know, uh, county you know, level. So the tools that we're doing developed, it's not there yet as to the long-term capital planning, but I think we set the date uh, for uh, this summer uh, to get that plan done, and then we'll be built into the 2022 budget planning you know, process. Uh, right now, it's a, a, it's a work in progress as far as doing that, although we have identified uh, it for different projects that we've discussed at the high level uh, what might be some of the funding needs, and already, such as Wildwood, that area, we've gotten grants accepted, uh, uh, issued, and working on some others. So. Uh, but it is a work in progress, and uh, we'll, we'll keep you advised as that uh, uh, evolves you know, further. Okay. Um, yeah, because also, I mean, some of the uh, tours uh, with some of these things now that are being identified, um, you know, when the review letters are written, uh, you know, I mean, maybe whether or not it's a, you know, a review letter, you know, you know to the applicant, but maybe... Um, at least advise a, a separate letter advising just the board of, of what the intentions are for that area. Right. Uh, you know, if there's going to be an expansion, just so everybody's aware of it. Because um, a lot of times, I mean, we're going in and telling them, we, we just tell the applicant, hey, you need to petition the town board to get within, you know, the water or sewer district. Right. Uh, um, you know, and s water may not be as much of a problem, but it seems to be that sewer seems to be the largest right. issue at the current point because there's just no capacity at, uh, Try municipal, um, at least you know, available to the town. Right. Uh, so, the, it, because of that, that's why we're working with other municipalities, looking at a, a you know, more a sped up plan, and why you know, East Fishkill, for example. But you know, we're having similar discussions with you know, Fishkill uh, going south, which also would involve uh, elements coming out of Beacon. But that's probably the southern area sector, you know, south of uh, Old Hopewell Road is going to be more of an issue for taking so just show where the ibm plan is okay so here this is one of the options that we are looking at and exploring is taking sewer you know from up in that southern quadrant south of you know old hopewell road and taking it down to the ibm plant which has probably about what two million gallons capacity and so east fishkill has that under their wing, and so we're working with them to explore that further. That's a longer term proposition, and it's going to also depend on probably earmarked funds out of the feds. And uh, but for once, we do have a process, Bruce, that's uh, we're able to, you know, look at it with a more uh, degree of whether it's predictability in some cases certainty uh, as we uh, work with you and the uh, people coming in that are interested in expansion, right? But we can say with some certainty, okay, it's it's a three to five year proposition or it's a two to three year, you know, based on where we might be now with some grant funding and application. So uh, at least uh, we're getting more of our hands around it than we, we had before, but not yet where we'd like it to be. And, and sometimes we find little things like even just the, the recent Fernia subdivision. Um, you know, they extended the water main. It was only a few hundred feet. But for a little subdivision, that's a nice little step in the right direction. You know, they lucked out that they were already at the end of the pipe. Obviously, if you're too far from the end of the pipe, it's not going to make sense from the developer's perspective. But yeah. when you get that opportunity to develop or to extend it, it's, it's nice to be able to let them do it, take care of it on their own schedule and their own time. Right. Yeah, well, Fernia was in the water district from the get-go. Right, but they had to build the pipe. That was, yeah, and that was the issue there because I remember we had discussions regarding the lot sizes. Um, yeah. They were able to get the smaller lot sizes right. because they had municipal water as opposed to not having, you know, anything. If they had nothing, they would have been at probably a one-acre site um, for each lot. 
So, I mean, a lot of that stuff's been looked at in the past because uh, I know a lot of the zoning changes over the years have been made based upon the uh, availability or current availability of water and sewer throughout the town. Yep, so. and then one of the one of the hiccups we run into often when we try to expand the districts is you get an area where somebody's interested in it, or you want to fill in a gap and not everybody's interested. So sometimes it's a challenge to get that sorted out, to get everybody on the same page. People want it until it finds out the cost of money and things like that, so it's it's a challenge to get people to work together. Yeah, no, 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 I understand that. I mean, I saw that go, you know, go south with the um, uh, Chelsea Ridge water line from Fishco. Uh, when they originally introduced that, that was a, um, uh, Chelsea Ridge had made an offer to the town that uh, they would put the line in. Um, and then once the project was complete, they were gonna give the line to the town and the town would maintain it and do it what they wish, you know, going forward. Um, that was an opportunity that was missed. Right. Um, you know. So we're reopening that to a degree right now, because Fishkill's also interested in working with us on that, so. No, that's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. But that was, uh, I remember in the past that a lot of the people living in that area were very upset when, uh, you know, they saw the prop, you know, the front of their property is getting ripped up and a you know, water line put in the ground and then they're being told that they couldn't hook up. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, that was a little upsetting to them. Exactly. Especially a lot of them having the issues over there. I know there's uh, quite a few that have, you know, they have, um, you know, failed, you know, failed wells, or yep. they've had, uh, you know, more more so water quality issues. Uh, you know, as as a lot of people in the Chelsea area. Have been over the so that that's why we're you know looking at this easement and doing some other things, and we can you know discuss more offline. You know, uh, the more the detail of uh, what uh, we're trying to do uh, going going forward. And that would be, you know, uh, my guess is, you know, possibly uh, within uh, two two years, two two and a half years, to get that done. And uh, just going back up to the uh, to the um, the Hamburg Road Marleville issue um, mm. with Alex Reese and the easements. Um, I mean, he's currently in front of the board, actually, probably looking for um, some type of final approval pretty soon on the subdivision. Uh, that he's doing on, on a lot of the existing lots. Uh, is that something that we're going to try to incorporate into this map he's going to file currently with the, you know, the uh, easement I, yeah, get from the, Hamburg Road across? Yeah, the route we're, we're looking at is about right here. I think this is yes. the previously approved subdivision, but right now his lot line change on these lots over here. So I think, unfortunately, the thing that's currently in front of the planning board isn't where where the easement would necessarily go. Okay, so it's going to be, all right, so it's in a land that he that he uh, subdivided earlier. Correct. Yeah, I don't know if it was 2013, but it was at, at that subdivision right. where That's right. central okay. septic set up. Exactly. Like yep. Right. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure where, with the, where the placement was. Yeah, sure. That's it. Yeah. Um, all right. And the other thing that we had, just as you have that map here, you know, going to tall trees and Amherst, we've had discussions, you know, they've been back and forth now, they're not really much with Montclair, but if in fact, as we think in, you know, the uh, health department, uh, Dan Keeler, everybody thinks that ultimately Montclair is going to have to go tie into our, our, our system. Uh, and then, you know, what we would, you know, also try to do is to get the line to come out to Route 9D. Uh, and then, you know, cause we do have businesses uh, that have expressed an interest of helping to go in on that. But, you know, right now, you know, the discussions with Montclair, you know, have stopped because uh, they think they could get some water out of uh, newly dug or, you know, deep into well. So, uh, but we expect that that's going to come back sooner or later. They also have a major sewer issue with their sewage treatment plant. So that's something else that's being discussed uh, as far as uh, another piece of the puzzle, ultimately. The, the town's thinking about uh, taking over their plant? And no, I, I don't think we want to touch that. It's just, you know, dealing with the sewer line and how do we extend it if we were to bring it uh, out into New Hamburg uh, and Route 9D, then, you know, you could see the, 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 what is it, a mile and a half or so down 
uh, going south along 9B and uh, whether or not we can get some funding, especially based on uh, you know, uh, income levels you know, with Montclair in that area. So, but it's something that's on the list, Bruce, that you know, where we are exploring. Because we'd have to take the you know, sewer you know, line from you know, however we bring it. So the idea is since the, you know, the big pipe, you could see kind of, you know, you could point out the big pipe as it goes through. So it can come across. And then the idea with Alex's easements and bring it across his property, then it could come over to either Marlerville Road and up or uh, out to New Hamburg Road up and going south along 9B. Okay. And that would be just basically looking to, to get most of the, the sewage of, of um, the 9D corridor then. Yes, right. It wouldn't really, it wouldn't really help anybody off of, you know, closer to the riverside. Probably not there. there. There we're going to have to look at, although one possibility is, you know, we've had discussions with uh, Chelsea Ridge, you know, apartments is that they do have a, a, a pocket plant in there that actually, you know, has some capacity and, you know, it, it could be possible to take the line, you know, actually maybe through that easement that we're talking about with a pump station down, you know, south, you know, along River Road North and bring it up to that plant or bring it up Chelsea Road so that we can also benefit foreign acres and boost and so forth. So that. That's something that actually we are, you know, talking with them uh, about. And I think soon to have a meeting uh, with them again on as one one option. Okay. Yeah, because there is some some you know some large parcels there right. off of uh, right. Chelsea Road, which you know, which could possibly develop be developed in the future. Right. That's why. And the septics continue to have problems, so we want to try to address that for our residents down there. Yeah, there? well, the hamlet, the hamlet's got a lot of issues. It's yeah, a lot of those properties right. very small and uh, no room for expansion. That's right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, we haven't yet uh, overlaid the villages' water and sewer, but we're in the process. So uh, uh, you know. Uh, soon you know we'll be able to show you like we have with the east fishkill you know the town of fishkill uh water and sewer interconnections because if you take just for example the uh uh you know area in the very southernmost part of the town which is watch hill section you know there's both sewer and sewer in part of it and water in part of it both both of those go into uh fishkill you know, so, uh, but, you know, the water that is served there, I think, yeah, I've had discussions with uh, Supervisor Albra. Uh, he, he'd welcome seeing our you know, better quality water tying in down to the Watch Hill area. And so that's what we're working on now, trying to find the interconnection points with the uh, town of Fishkill. And is there, is there a conduit through there that uh, that might be able to? Um, we would to, that we would have to put in having to put large amounts of uh, of money up for infrastructure. We'd have to, you know. I think uh, we have a separate map that shows the uh, pipe sizes. So you know, we have uh, you know one of the thinkings was if in fact that property that. Uh, Tim, uh, Tom pointed out earlier that's being considered developing that long, that elongated part, uh, then maybe can, you know, if that's connected by the developer, then it's not a far route to take it down into Watch Hill from a water point of view. Uh, and so you can see the water connections here, the sewer, uh, it doesn't extend to the whole area, uh, but uh, water could be, you know, connected in. Uh, and that's under discussion as well as sewer. Sewer is only in the the you know, the, the part, the half of it that's you know uh, on the uh, west side of the water district. And Tom has a map of that. So so we are looking at that. So there you can see the uh, uh, you know sewer. Right, right, Tom. Yeah, you know, so that, but we don't have, you don't have the map that's showing the interconnections for the sewer, right, with Fishkill? 
Nope. Yeah, not not, that's still a work in progress. So we, uh, we'll have yeah. that in the not too distant future, I hope. Um, going back out to Route 9, just uh, you know, with the uh, the Plant Depot site, because it seems to be, I mean, it seems to be a lot of interest in that property. Um, yeah, I know we had you all that came in, had a you know conceptual discussion upon doing something there. I don't, I don't think that's gonna right. um, probably fly. But uh, is there? There's really nothing that can be done in a timely fashion to kind of make that property work for, oh. um, you know, for like some type of, uh, you know, water or sewer. Cause, uh, you know, that, that's a, that's a fairly good piece right. of property over there. Um, so the answer to that, there is the possibility Bruce with respect to what is now being discussed in, uh, Biden's, uh, 1.9 you know billion dollar COVID relief plan. So the town in earlier versions, and I think still does have you know uh, through uh, Sean Patrick Maloney's office uh, earmarked uh, you know a few million dollars actually, if not bad number, if that were to hold, that could be used for infrastructure development, uh, and uh, that's the one area that we think that would be best used. Uh, Tim and Tom have already done uh, projections and, you know, preliminary drawings of where the lines could go up and down the road coming from the Adams area, as well as what capacity, additional capacity uh, might be needed. Uh, water, you know, as you said, noticed, you know, is no problem. We have more than sufficient capacity. Uh, to, but, you know, Tom Harvey has numbers that show what you know, would be the additional capacity if we took it in phase one to the plant depot site, or maybe that's phase 1A and 1B. So right now we're working on trying to get you know, grant funding and, uh, you know, hopefully if we get something either, you know, uh, different forms from the feds, uh, then, uh, you know, that could, I think they have a requirement within 12 months to start, you know, construction once you get that awarded. So. If that moves quickly through, you know, uh, Congress, then you know it, it's possible that you could be looking at a two, you know, maybe out to three years, you know, based on planning and whatever uh, obligations they have. But that that's that is uh, something that we've been looking at, you know, very closely. And certainly, the sewer part would really help us with respect to Fleetwood. Yeah, yeah, so what? Yeah, it's close so we on. have a uh, you know a, a multiple interest there that would help us source, I think, more in the way of grant funding and earmarked funds because of that uh, Fleetwood you know, plant. Because then we have environmental issues. You know, we that no longer goes down into the Hudson River, right? Uh, you know, so there's there's a lot of uh, you know pluses uh, if we could do it. So we're we have that, and I think you know if uh, it looks like uh, we're tracking it. We, we may be able to get something in uh, fairly fairly quickly once it's decided what that level of funding is going to be. Yeah, okay. Actually, Tim, we've already presented something, at least the list, the project list to uh, uh, Congressman Maloney's office, uh, you know, as well. So that's right. We gave them conceptual both on water and sewer. Yeah. But again, going down nine. Two-sided coin. If it ends up going to Trimuni, it's not only the cost of the infrastructure and the pipes, right. but we're currently at the plant. There's roughly I don't know six to nine million dollar capital improvements that are required at the plant. Right. Uh, I think the town share would be like three million and change. Right. And so we've applied. You know, or the Trimuni's engineers applied for EFC funding for all the plant improvements and. I guess uh, fell short of the funding line on this last round, so uh, that was sort of another setback in, you know, and it's a two pronged thing. It's not only the pipes, like I say, but there's going to be necessary improvements at the plant. Um, so, you know, it remains to be seen. Maybe that some of the funding can go toward right. that, which may open up some other easier opportunities. Um, but that all remains to be seen. But once we see where the town of Fishkill sewer interconnections are, then we can 
see if that's another option taking it south, you know, and, you know, taking uh, that remaining part of, you know, 9D south rather than connecting with Tri-Muni. So we are, that's what we're working on right now, Bruce. Okay. Um, the village, the village of Fishkill, that, that, the plant that's there, is that right. part of is that part of the town of Fishkills? Well, they, I, I'm not sure exactly how what's the sharing relation or how they use it, but you know that that's one option. You know that, you know, uh, you know the village, you know the IBM, and then Beacon. You know, Beacon has also a, a nice size and I think relatively new you know facility. So as you can see, Beacon's not far from our line. Right. Yeah, no, no, I know. I'm just kind of. Yeah. As I'm looking at the map, I'm seeing you know avenues to right, yeah, you know, to get to those locations. Yep. Um, Bruce, um, I for you, um, I would say probably about six years ago, um, the village of Fishkill had put out an RFP um, to do some um, infrastructure improvement work to connect um, their some of their sewer system to the plant at Beacon. So um, I think that you know their existing uh, sewer treatment uh, facility was near capacity, so they were looking at um, you know trying to, to offload some of the capacity to uh, the city of Beacon, and I know they were looking at I believe you know working with um, the town official as well for collecting some of the properties in Glenham and things. So. Um, that was something that was out there, I'd say, about six years ago, but I haven't seen anything recently on it. Okay. All right, so they're probably, I mean, maybe they were, maybe they worked together with Deacon, I guess, when Deacon did the work on their Right, yeah, yeah. Right. Because Beacon was under, I believe Beacon was under a consent order um, from DEC. Um, and, uh, you know, because of uh, issues there, but I know they, they, you know, got grant money and did some work in the plant, but, um, you know, I, there was some sort of intermunicipal agreement, I believe, between those three municipalities. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, yeah, just looking at, yeah, just different right. avenues, I guess, to, you know, different conduits to, I guess, to get it to flow, you know, away from, away from the town. All right. Um, But um, with it, go back to Tri Municipal. Obviously, you said they're they're looking to expand um, or make uh, put some money into their plant. Be right that's back. also at the end of the day, that's going to return some type of uh, increased uh, capabilities of that plant. Well, it's a tricky situation in that you know uh, during dry weather flows, there's plenty of capacity and no issues. It's really during wet weather flow, so you get inundated with these high intensity rain events, uh, flows at the plant jump up. And the way the flows are regulated, you can sort of meter the flows coming from the town, from the village, uh, and then from the town of Poughkeepsie. And, you know, uh, Jim could go on about the contract with them, but based on the percentage of flow at the plant, because the town is a tenant, you know, they have to pay the percentage of the cost of the improvement. So there's slated improvements to try to help the flow capacity at the plant that will, will benefit all three parties. Um, however, with the identification of these wet weather flows, you know, that's pointing the finger at the infrastructure, some of the older infrastructure within the town. And the DEC has pointed that out relative to Wildwood and now Midpoint that, you know, we're going to have to do an I and I, they call it I and I study uh, inflow infiltration. And that's to basically clean and TV the sewer lines to see if there's major cracks or offsets that are allowing groundwater or surface water to get in there. Uh, you know, really the problem is more likely uh, people's sump pumps and people pumping out their basements and putting it into the sewer. And, you know, it's, it's kind of a real problem in trying to govern that and police it. Um, so one of the ideas, you know, talking about developers is, you know, we know we have this I and I uh, situation. It's ongoing. It's everywhere. It's not just a Loppinger problem. Um, but you know, there, is there a way to sort of impose some 
like you know there's parkland fees like when a developer comes in is there a way we could generate i and i fees so that you know uh, i think jim mentioned maybe do it on a proposed development sewer flow but i was thinking more in line of you know what is the proposed sewer system what are the pipe diameters how many feet are these pipes and we know you know the pricing it costs to fix these types of things so you know, maybe we do some sort of factor that says, okay, developer wants to put in a thousand feet of sewer pipe of eight inch sewer pipe. And we know, you know, it costs a thousand dollars a foot to uh, repair sewer in, or do I and I investigations and repair. So maybe there's a metric that, you know, we can assess the developer on his new sewer to have money go or investigating and repair other areas throughout. The that was one of the things that we're kicking around on, on how to be fair about that. You know? yeah. It is a real problem. And the more I and I we can uh, address and diminish, it frees up capacity at the plant. So uh, there would be a benefit to the developer in trying to offset that. So, so to Tim's point also regarding the limitations of the plant, um, you know the the flows um in wet weather flows sometimes are probably you know 150 percent if not higher of the the permitted capacity um which in and of itself is actually not um an issue with respect to dep because um the permit allows you to average the flows over the year so you know we have you know very very low flows in the summertime when it's dry but you know, in, in, you know, March, April, when you've got snow melt and very rainy, you know, we have very, very high uh, flows through the plant. Um, the biggest, one of the biggest issues at the plant is that the outfall, um, there's a, an outfall pipe that runs from the plant. The plant is, on, is below Bowdoin Park, for those of you who don't know where it is. Um, it's just north of Bowdoin Park on the east side of the railroad tracks. And there is an outflow pipe that runs underneath the railroad tracks into the river, um, and um, what's hap what happens in times of very, very high wet weather and high flows, um, that pipe backs up into the plant, and um, historically it's caused you know some damage to to some of the things in the plant. So um, the um, Tri Municipal Sewer Commission has been looking at you know what's required to do um, to increase that outfall pipe or put in a second outfall pipe um but you know as things happen there's um bald eagles nests um historically sensitive areas um sturgeon run running in the river um the railroad is being you know uh difficult as far as um you know any work would would not uh, be able to shut down the train lines so you know expanding that outflow pipe um has gotten to be you know a, a pretty difficult um proposition and you know and that's also a limit on expanding capacity in the plant as well so um you know unfortunately that's been a real real a big design flaw um that you know has to be addressed going forward well at least there's no turtles jim yeah that, that's that's the only thing but they'll probably migrate from yeah. Robinson Lane yeah. <laughs> um, one day over there. Um, you know, they do have bats, too. I forgot the yeah, bats. That's right. So there's bald eagles, bats, but no sure. turtles. So, you know, it's uh, just wanted to share with you, Bruce and team, you know, to give you a, an idea of, you know, many things that are going on you know, that do impact the one way or the other. And then I think, you know, we will certainly keep you updated uh, with both, you know, refinements of the maps and the data, and then also other elements of it as we're looking at, you know, funding sources and plans on uh, moving, moving forward with uh, areas. And then to the extent that you get inquiries, then we can either see if there's something we can do to expedite or, uh, uh, take a maybe a little bit different uh, uh, turn uh, in the bend of the road. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, no, it's been, I mean, a lot of the information given tonight is 
you know, very informative. I, mean, I know that, you know, the other board members on the, you know, on the call here probably, uh, um, probably picked up a lot from it um, tonight. And I just think that, you know, as we move forward and, you know, some of the newer projects coming in that are, you know, closer to, um, uh, you know, that are closer to some of the existing systems or right. you know, maybe in the system. I and mean, I think just if it's related to us, you know, real early in the process to whether or not we're, we're looking at something that, you know, is it, is going to be, um, something that's going to, you know, that, that there is capacity or there's not capacity. That, that's more of the bigger questions. Um, right. Yeah. You know, Cause then you can tell the developer on the front side, Hey, you know, this is, you know, we do have it or, you know, it's going to take that, you know, four or five years to, before this infrastructure, you know, can actually develop. Exactly. Uh, you know, and at the same time, it gives them, you know, it's fair to them that you're not just, you know, they're just not hanging out there thinking that they're going to get something, you know, and right. it drags out for, you know, a few years, and then they're like, they throw their hands up and walk away from it. Right. Um, but, and I think with the process now that we have internally, you know, working, you know, Barbara and myself and our consultants working regularly, in fact, you know, having very regular meetings, you know, as we discuss these things and we update the information, then we're able to work uh, much more, I think, effectively and efficiently, which has been part of the you know, change that we brought into place. So that that will help you, and particularly with uh, Barbara, then communicating to you uh, and, and the planning board members regularly. So that's our goal: is to make it more effective, more efficient, you know, and more time. You know, Bruce, to your point. One of the other things that you know would be helpful um, is you know if we have a number of projects you know within the nine route nine corridor or you know certain projects that are you know contemplated for a particular area. For example, we were you know there was a discussion regarding Alpine and uh, and a, a potential subdivision off a sewage place. Um, you know if you have more than one um, developer who can kind of pull funds. Um, to, to do the infrastructure improvements, um, it's definitely, you know, worth, uh, you know, much, uh, much easier to do. Um, you know, the, um, the town of LaGrange, you know, did that in some respects, uh, although I know it took a lot longer than um, a lot of the developers wanted it to take. Um, you know, it probably took a decade, but, you know, a portion of that was timing in that, you know, I believe they, they looked at that study you know, they began that study right around the time the market crashed in 2008, which which really dragged it out. But, um, you know, you see now that um, there is a big demand, you know, in the county. Um, uh, you know, there a lot of the properties that um, people had looked at previously and, you know, for economic reasons, didn't necessarily consider going forward. But now, um, you know, there's a bigger demand and, uh, you know, a lot of these p properties that, you know, look to be too expensive to develop. Now, you know, the threshold for, you know, what, what the return is, you know, makes them more, a, more of a viable candidate than in the past. Yeah, no, no, I'm saying that is, you know, plus there being the, the lack of, um, you know, the lack of good properties being left in the town too. Right. Yeah. And a lot of, uh, you know, large parcels that are, um, you know, that are, that are free and clear of, um, you know, wetlands or flood zones and things like that, that, that will, um, you know, limit the amount of development on the property. Right. So some of these are, you know, plus the, the, the values too of what they're going to build, they're going to be worth a little, a lot more than what they were in the past. So they might actually make a return on it if they build today, yeah. um, especially with the way the, uh, you know, the residential market has been increasing over the last few years. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, one of the things that, you know, on the, on the residential side, particularly the multifamily, um, you know, you, you mentioned that, you know, we had a number of properties, people who've been interested to believe the AVR project there underneath the power lines off of Route 9, you know, they, they'd come in and looked and, you know, that site had a lot of wetlands and things like that. So, you know, the, but, you know, with some of the average density subdivisions and, you know, potentially maybe if we revisit the code with respect to density bonuses for, you know, protect and maybe, you know, I almost say low affordable housing is, is I guess the best word to use. 
you know, it might make it, you know, some of those properties a little bit more um, attractive, Potent, you know, potentially if we put in a, you know, a density bonus um, in the event that, you know, the property owner um, is going to make a commitment to do, you know, infrastructure improvements. I mean, I think that's, you know, that's one of the ways to accomplish the goal here is a, you know, a public-private partnership where, you know, the property owner, um, you know, makes a commitment to make some infrastructure improvements and, you know, they get a density bonus. We've done that in the past. That's basically right. what we did on uh, um, uh, the Regency, Toll Regency, um, you know, so, you know, there's, there's, there's a, you know, a history of that in the town. And, you know, that project came out, I think, pretty well. Um, and, you know, we did get, you know, we got the, the Meadowwood Loop and a lot of improvements out of that project that, you know, we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Hey, uh, this, is, this is Walter. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. I think part of the discussion this afternoon also was um, possibly developing a, a constraints map, um, which would include steep slopes, wetlands, floodplains. Uh, right. I, know we, I know we spoke depth of bedrock. We could also say depth to, to the groundwater table as well, because I know some areas along Sprout Creek, you have a high seasonal groundwater table of two to four feet, which you know, pretty much prohibits. Hence, if you drive down Knox on Road, you'll see the large hemp farm because that site it was probably over 20 years. It was four or five, six developers that tried to go in there, but due to the uh, seasonal high groundwater tables, it's impossible, um, especially from a stormwater aspect. You really couldn't develop any stormwater management facilities. So I think a, a constraints map would be very good as well. Yeah, we, we agree, and you know, I think CPL is already looking into how to uh, you know, develop that. You know, with the resources, I think you know there we have uh, you know probably less resources available, so we're going to have to work a little bit harder. Or certainly, you know, I, I, when you were trying to get on the phone, you know, Walter, my question to you is, uh, you know, how can we get better uh, identification of the wetlands, you know, throughout the town, right? Uh, in well, addition to your book. Right, right. Well, we do have, I mean, the DEC, uh, the state regular wetlands are pretty easy to pull up. Um, I know within my book there, there is a streams map in right. the town of Wappinger. Um, and then, of course, you have all your federal and town regulated wetlands as well. Um, but yeah, it is an undertaking, of course. And then, especially when you start going into steep slopes or depth of bedrock, depth of groundwater, you know, it gets a little more complex. You know, I think you know, we can start, as we've done with a lot of this already, you know, you know, where is more of the low-hanging fruit, so that I think is certainly the wetlands. And, and you know, we've, uh, Jim and I have talked about a, a couple of approaches to engineers in the area. You know, we'll, we're going to continue to explore that, but that might be a way that we can get access to data. You know, I don't need to go into that now, but he and I had right. a conversation okay. this afternoon on that. So. You know, we are looking at the ways to uh, access uh, a better uh, database or databases, you know, that will allow us to do that. Okay. Well, a lot of that stuff is available online. We've, we've even found some since we talked earlier this afternoon. So. I did too. I, I did a little looking at some maps myself this afternoon also. So I expect, you know, within the next few months, we're going to have a pretty good uh, instead of overlays and maps that will be extremely useful. And it's not just for, you know, Bruce, I think your purpose is for, for grant funding and a variety of things, you know, earmarking and what have you that uh, we'll be able to use unlike anything, you know, we, we've never been able to put this stuff into a grant application, so. Yeah, well, I think the, uh, yeah, I think if you're collecting all this data and you're overlaying it onto a, uh, you know, onto a map. I mean, it, it's, you know, obviously in the best interest of the town because, you know, that information will always be there. Um, right. You know, and then, you know, as, as things change, it could be updated. And, you know, but again, as, as these projects come in, um, at least to the planning board, I mean, we could, you know, it could all be put out on the table. Right. Um, you know, so they could be evaluated, you know, for whether it's that individual parcel or, you know, that, you know, that entire area, you know, so that, you know, everybody can make the, you know, the best educated decisions, you know, to which way the project should go. Yeah. Um, you know, especially with the, you know, obviously the, the groundwater issues and everything else. I mean, you don't want to, um, you know, 
most of the time we're relying upon the um, uh, the applicant's engineer. You know, they're giving us whatever, and you know, I guess that could you know alleviate some issues too if we have the data on file. Right. Oh, it's there, so you know we're knowing what's going on instead of taking a word of you know somebody else. Yep. Um, and that's what I wanted to offer, Bruce. Is if something like that comes up at the planning board, let us know. We may not have it, but it might not be a big deal to develop it, or we may have it, but just didn't have a chance to talk to you about it, so you didn't know yet. So yeah, if something yeah, comes up, let us know and ask us. We may very well be able to deliver. Yeah, because I wasn't, I wasn't really aware of that, that that issue, the Sprout Creek area, um, you know, with the water table being so high, but, right. you know, again, that Wapner Farms estate, you know, that was just, you know, we just approved that not too long ago. So that, that's probably something that might have, that should have probably, should have been addressed at that point in time while they were in front of the board. Right. So um, with respect to that, I'm working with Cornell Cooperative to do something similar to what we did with the Wapner's Creek. And that's coming up with a you know, watershed study that would move toward you also getting grant monies to dredge, you know, the, the creek, you know, to remove a lot of the debris that attributes to flooding, remove the beaver huts, perhaps the cars that are in there, you know, that would then uh, allow for better control in flood situations, uh, we believe, you know, at least Cordell Cooperative does. Yep. Yeah, no, which would make sense. I mean, I know they... I know they did a lot of um, uh, going some years back. They had to do a lot of that work up in the Catskills to, yep. uh, to alleviate and, the flooding. And they've done it in the Wappinger's Creek, which we're now working on the implementation phase and grant funding phase. To Dick, Dick, with respect to the, the law of Wappinger Creek, I know that um, I believe the EPA is looking at a phase two um, remediation plan right. uh, for the TriStar you know, uh, anodizing site. Um, and the, you know, the old manufactured gas, um, plant, right. the original work that they did was just, uh, was upland work and, you know, they, they kind of punted right. on, uh, what was in the Creek. And from my understanding is now they're starting to look at, yeah, I've, I've been talking with them, Jim. And in fact, they just got an email. Uh, I haven't read it yet, you know, but, uh, an email update. So yeah, I've been in communication and they are looking most well, certainly at the lower Creek and I've emphasized some of the benefits that we would also have, you know, from a parkland point of parklands and, and other you know, perspectives. So that is uh, going to be getting much more active, I think, in, in the coming months, yeah. from what I understand. Now, of course, part of it depends on funding of the EPA by uh, President Biden, but that looks like that they're going to be better funded than, than before. Um, yeah. Going, you know, I want uh, maybe we could touch back on some of this stuff too with the uh, the parkland, just for the benefit of the rest of the board. Um, the uh, the projects that are being identified, um, eventually that will all come forward um, with you know the individual parks of where the work is looking to be done, but also kind of creating up some kind of some zoning map or something or some area map showing if a development goes into a certain area to try to funnel a, you know, get a developer to kind of uh, yeah. develop, you know, try to put money towards the park within that area, or are we looking at adjacent areas, uh, things like that. I just, yeah. you know, I know we had that issue with the, right. um, uh, in the past where, you know, we were, the, you know, the, the courts had ruled that, you know, we might not be handling it 100% right. Uh, the right direction, but to make it, you know, going forward, um, hopefully that plan is going to be developed in the near future. Right. Yeah. Jim's working on, I think, the le you know legislation or the you know the wording you know, from code point of view. Uh, you know, we've completed a, I think the first step, which is really to get the project lists identified. I think Tim and Tom are working uh, you know with uh, particularly you know, Steve Frazier on identifying at least kind of soft costs as to what many of these projects would uh, incur. You know, we are, you know, as you know, from what you saw, we do have surplus land, but there are some uh, wards that don't have adequate parks. So that's another possibility of you know, looking at, you know, like, let's say, uh, Ward 1, you know, for example, you know, of uh, some other, you know, park that could 
be created. So, you know, we're, I hope that within the next two months or so, we'll have that, you know, you know really workable uh, state, uh, state so that, you know, the planning board would have that and use it as, a, you know, a, I think a, a cheat sheet as to how it would be done, including also naming rights and other things that we could do, you know, working with the developers. Just well, to, one naming rights <laughs> or what I've seen. So to, to, to add on to that, so basically the issue that was raised with respect to our current recreation fees is that, um, you know, our recreation fees were calculated um, based on the cost of purchasing new recreation land. And the, the legal challenge that was raised is that we're not buying, we're not buying any new recreation land. And you now, as the supervisor said, we, we really don't want any new recreation land. And you know, what we've used the recreation fees for was for improving the existing parks, um, which is a valid um, you know, legal purpose under the statute. Um, but the problem is that you know, what the methodology we had for assessing the fees was not based on that. At the end of the day, you know, I think we're probably going to wind up, you know, charging roughly the same amount per lot. Uh, you know, it, it, it really, we could adjust it, you know, once we get this number of what the overall improvements are. But I think as a starting point, we could, you know, basically look at uh, what we are, what, what it is per lot. And then the other thing, too, is we also have to look at kind of adjoining municipalities um, and what they're charging. We don't really want to, you know, price ourselves out of the market, so to speak. So, um, you know, those are all, but again, those are legislative questions for the town board. And to the extent we, you know, come up with a number and document our reasoning for the number um, and, and uh, adopted in a local law, then it's presumed to be legally valid. Um, and I think, you know, if that's the case, what, what was proposed was, um, as Dick had said, is, is kind of, you know, identifying the parks within the town by ward um, and potentially some central park or central parks um, where um, the funding would come from the various municipalities throughout the town. Um, and then that would give the planning board, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the authority to, you know, and, you know, now whether we do it, you know, the, where, you know, the planning board will make a determination um, on its own as to where the funds would be allocated um, or, you know, whether you have a consultation with, you know, the developer and reach some sort of an agreement, um, you know, that's another option. Um, but, you know, what the legal guidance from the New York State Controller's Office had said in the past was that if you were going to, uh, if you're going to um, spend recreation fees, that should, they should be spent um, near the, the subdivision that, that generated them. So I think from, you know, so, you know, based on the, the guidance that's out there, this, you know, in some respects complies more, right. you know, with the legal, with the illegal opinions that were, were previously out there. Because, you know, we, we, we really don't want any more land. Um, no. You know, we, we, we've got issues taking care of all the ones we have. Right. Yeah, it's a big headache right now. I mean, I think as far as central parks go, you know, you'd look at, Conworth and um, probably Schlatt House yes, that's what um, and Robinson Lane as being the central parks for the town um, and then the smaller parks, you know, by Ward, you know, and I guess also Mort's Field actually would be considered a central right. park because of the facility. And, and, and I think over at the Regency, over that area where the soccer fields are, but we have a huge amount of the land, which was decommissioned water and sewer plants right. and other things. So I... Jim, you know, the, what he just mentioned as far as those parks, uh, and, uh, and I think that one over there where the soccer fields right. are, but we have yeah. pond and other things are, are what we're thinking of as more centrally located to the wards. Okay. And then, then, you know, the mechanism, I think, Bruce, you know, as compared to right now, it all went into Parkland Trust. It could, but there would have to be probably dedicated lines, accounts, or, you know, uh, building renovation or parkland improvement that we would uh, need to do. So Jim and I and Frederick, you know, will work work on that. But I think conceptually, Jim, you know, I think it's correct to say is that the board is in agreement you know, with this approach because it has to be done. But I think fundamentally uh, we're trying to move it forward, and that's why we put together the project list the way we have. 
No, no, I agree. I said, I just, I know we've talked about it in the past. I just, yeah. uh, this needs to be, yeah. you know, something out there and then something also, yeah. you know, you know, for the, you know, for the projects, you know, that it kind of gets incorporated right. instead of, you know, things lagging out there for, you know, for long periods of time. And then, you know, at the 11th hour, trying to figure out how yeah. to address it. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's just, yeah, and, uh, and, and we don't want to incur any more legal fees. And, you know, we, I think, uh, Jim and I had a good settlement with respect to Old Hopewell Commons and getting an agreement on the monies and dedicating that to Spook Hill Park. That's one example, you know, that we were able to do. You know, so that that's a good model that will, you know, then refine going forward. Yeah, no, no, I agree. It's a it's a good plan. It just as long as there's an identified list of yeah. Yeah. Uh, potential projects, right. you know, the way that you know the developer can say, you know. You number one, know where the money's going, and right. it is a justified, you know, there is, you know, justification to asking them for that money. Right. And, uh, well, CPL has already, you know, a good spreadsheet. We're working on some more of the estimates for money. You know, there would be priorities, and I think the division of that, as Jim said, and then we do have a kind of a lesser, you know, in a sense of lesser intensity, but a project list of 75 projects that uh, a lot of them are park related that steve frazier's responsibility is related to so it's uh you know i i think we've gotten our hands around that now it's just kind of uh, in the process of refining it and getting prices and priorities associated with it okay all right that's good Anything else from any of the other board members? That yeah, I was just going to ask here and see if anybody else have any questions they'd like to raise? No, actually, I'm good. I mean, okay. so good. Yeah, Ralph, I see you're on here also. Yeah, Ralph, you're on here also. I don't have any comment at this time, but when I think of something, I'll let you know. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, who else we got? This Marco, uh, Nick. We have Nick on here also. You good, Nick? Uh, you got to unmute yourself. I see you talking, but yeah, um, I heard a lot and I learned a lot from the, the uh, presentation. So I'm very happy I tuned in. Thanks, Nick. Okay, good. It's good to hear. Um, yeah, I know we've I know we've done a uh, you know we've been on for an hour and a half. Um, oh wow! Yeah. Else, uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of information to digest. You know, to digest on this end. Um, uh, one question I do have is um, is eventually the I mean, where do we stand with the town hall right now and opening back up for meetings? Uh, yeah, we're going to discuss that on Monday night uh, in executive okay. session. Yeah. So I'll let okay. you know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm just curious. Um, yeah. Only because I know that, uh, um, you know, once I think once the board, right. uh, once the board, uh, um, um, uh, appoints the next board member, um, I'd like to possibly work with, um, you know, the professionals again with possibly another workshop session. Sure. Um, one of which is uh, kind of like the hit the highlights again with all the um, uh, secret requirements and things like that. Because uh, I know that there's like different variations. Some people have, you know, have, have sat through a bunch of classes on it. And I know that there's other board members that probably haven't. And uh, I think it would be a good opportunity for everybody to be able to um, get together, you know, to go right. through some of these things again. You know, maybe have a little more, uh, you know, have that and then some other items put together too for another workshop session. Right. Um, and then possibly some of these items that we discussed tonight might be a little further developed and, uh, uh, you know, for like the parks right. and things like that. Definitely. that we will get uh, yep. promoted. But sometimes it's easier in a. Uh, oh, I agree. Yeah, you know, in, in a, you know, in person uh, venue as opposed to, you know, Zoom. You know, it's right. you know, Zoom getting us by, but. Uh, Sometimes not everybody's getting everything they can out of it. 
I agree, you know, very much. Jim and I were talking earlier today. He's doing some more research on a couple issues, so we'll discuss it with the town board on, on Monday night. Okay, uh, that sounds good. get back to you right after that. Okay. All right. Um, all right, so I guess, I mean, with everything, I mean, unless anybody else has anything they, they're planning on bringing up this evening. Um, Nothing from my end. No? Okay. No. All right. Covered a lot. Uh, Sarah, I haven't seen you in a while. Do you, do you have anything for us? I don't, but I can add to the speaker workshop. Barbara and I had spoken earlier today about maybe setting that up at a future meeting, so we can do that one night. Okay, yeah, no, I, that's, I look forward to that. Um, as I said, just I'll, I'll, we'll wait upon the town board. Um, you know, that way we, you know, once we get a new member, we can kind of do it all together and, um, you know, as a group and kind of brings him in and might bring him up to speed a little more. Okay. Or before, uh, you know, things get too crazy. All right. Um, all right. Other than that, I think it's it. Barbara, do you have anything, Barbara? No, I think this went really well. And like Sarah said, we discussed doing secret. It just seemed too much tonight. So no, 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 I agree. Does anybody want to listen to me talk about secret for an yeah. hour? <laughs> Not tonight. Another night. You're another day. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> But I, do. Uh, I, I listened to Jim Horan for two hours earlier today, so, you know, I, <laughs> I love you, Jim. Just Not about that seeker. <laughs> no, no, Jim, Jim has uh, some very, uh, very in-depth uh, detail on history. Yes. Yeah, which we could also say for, you know, another night, some of the historic uh, aspects of Wappingers. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, very good. And it was taped and I think live streamed, and so that will be available for other you know, board members or anybody who wants to do a refresher course. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. No. I know. Um, yeah. You know, the others that weren't able to make it tonight, yep. at least they can. Uh, yep. They can watch this, which would be good. Yep. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, thank you for well, all information this evening. Stay safe in the snowstorm. Okay. Yes. You too. See you, folks. Have a good night. 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 Good night.